OK, so um, what we are going to learn here is uh, transformational process design for a digitally accelerated world. That world that is the topic. OK, um, it is uh, kind of a plain uh, old vanilla business process design. Um, but uh, I'm going to be aligning it. Uh, it's a modified or transformed version of process design itself to fit into the um, digitally accelerated world. OK, as you progress through the session, you will understand what I'm talking about. Um, so let's get into it. So what uh, overall we are going to be covering in this session is um, the very foundational thing about process design or uh, business process design in uh, overall sense um, is the concept of enterprise architecture. So enterprise architecture uh, planning becomes the foundation for any resilient transformational process. So without uh, discounting the architecture and design, if anybody approaches um, process design, that's going to be uh, an invitation for uh, disaster. OK, so we're going to be looking into it and then enterprise integration um, as a overall fundamental. Um, the glue that takes from the uh, taking the um, framework and uh, put all the pieces of the puzzles of the process architecture into it. That's the enterprise integration. Uh, so business architecture gives the um, architecture, sub architecture within the enterprise architecture to uh, make the puzzles fit in each other properly aligned so that the process you know, integration can be done or design and integration is done moving forward, right? And then business process management as a business process design analysis, design and management is the uh, way how you can design the processes within those uh, or uh, business architectures and how each one of these uh, process can start talking to each other um, in proper way in a so that when the uh, transformation happens, nothing will fall through the crack. Okay. And then I take to how this can be designed. You know, when it's easy to say process design, but then there has to be fundamental way of learning how to uh, design each one of these processes and how practically using the methodologies available. That's where the unified modeling language introduction and uh, BPM and the business process uh, manage the notation, you know, um, uh, is being introduced. That's the purpose, you know, giving a complete package within uh, this session for anybody should get kickstart on their uh, journey to become a business process analyst. Um, process designer, uh, robotic process analysis professional, or a business engineer, business analyst in the in for the uh, modern world. Still the plain world uh, vanilla BPM has to be covered with the business analysis to make it uh, you know, um, relevant for the transformational world. And uh, to a greater extent, many project managers would need to know all these things because many, uh, many times the project management itself has a lot of complex uh, process involved, um, especially in the global scenario um, where uh, you work with uh, multiple teams across the world, how uh, everything can come together in a coordinated uh, cohesive way, right? So that's the um, 
so with this um, session, uh, one can kick start in all these uh, functional areas in their career. OK. So first thing is enterprise architecture and frameworks. I'm not going to be. This is going to be a very long session if I spend a lot of time. The purpose is to just give a kickstart. So, um, you know, there uh, can be um, um, other uh, private sessions, um, but then this is to just to open the eyes and give a framework of learning. So what is enterprise architecture? Enterprise architecture is um, looking at everything from the 30,000 feet all the way to the ground level, creating the whole holistic view of an organization um, and then focusing on each one of the areas uh, independent to each other and then coordinated design with each other, right? So um, it could be aerial view, with what I call it as an aerial view. It's just at the very high level how you would look at it. You know, this is where the the CXOs, the chief executives uh, of the organization, the board, all these people, you know, what type of goal setting they do, what type of high level uh, organizational process design, you know, they have. And these are the leadership team and uh, what they view from, right? That level of uh, architecture from their perspective. Then the next level is the business view. I call it as a elevated view is like you know, which is relevant for all the business managers, um, you know, from all the um, organizational horizontals, from the human resources to the production, to supply chain, uh, inventory, all of them, how they look into how they manage the, the organization from the uh, business point of view, right? And then uh, the ground level, this is where the information uh, view, where the ground level people, um, this is where the design of computer systems, software uh, solutions, uh, hardware solutions, and uh, everything coming together to give the ground support for the uh, entire uh, business process to you know um, be designed and, and uh, implemented and run efficiently. This is how the organizations has to be um, you know, working uh, like a gear and wheel system, one driving the other and holding the other, right? So ground view is uh, most important uh, of all. And then there's a final, which is uh, usually unnoticed because it goes under the ground, um, but then, you know, makes uh, make or break an organization significantly is the uh, underground view. Um, which is the technology infrastructure. So uh, why I call this as a technology, the other one as a information, because software is not a te technology. Your software is, a, you know, a, a derivative um, solution created uh, based on certain technologies, right? So um, technology view is uh, about the computers, about the servers, about the communication channels, about the protocols, um, everything else that you cannot see in an organization, but becomes a critical piece of the organization, right? So this is a one organization view, but then if you keep adding the cones, right? Inverted cones uh, across, this is where the transformational uh, design is gonna look like. Uh, is essentially the same organization, how it looks today, when we design the transformational architecture, we design this one for today, and then the next uh, same inverted cone. How it it should be, uh, uh, it should be uh, viewed, or it should be uh, 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 it should be transformed in one year, two years, or ten years. Right? That's how the uh, transformational design is conducted. So. Um, What is enterprise architecture? So enterprise architecture, um, it's not an information technology architecture design. Basically, it's an enterprise issue itself. So what it is solving? Basically, enterprise architecture is about architecting the enterprise uh, in uh, and then creating transformational 
uh, architecture of the enterprise. This is not just applicable only for enterprise in a, as a private enterprise. Uh, it is applicable for uh, government enterprises. Um, many multiple government uh, organizations coming together could be seen as an enterprise. Uh, even uh, global uh, NGOs uh, or enterprises um and the um uh, and then uh, multinational organizations or uh, large scale transformational enterprises so enterprises are uh, not necessarily just one entity or one company coming together it's kind of a multiple companies uh, multiple institutions coming together to create uh, something uh, a structure on a, for a common uh, goal right um in the in the geoeconomics of uh, nations and uh, the state uh, it could be seen as a uh, enterprise could be uh, multiple institutions coming together for a common uh, geoeconomic goal for a nation or for a uh, for a region right that's how um, this can you know this should be viewed so enterprise architecture is so important driver to achieve <clears throat> the common goal. Um, these are all references from John Zachman, the father of information um, design. Uh, he created enterprise architecture as a, you know, the, as a practice in the 90s and uh, started from 80s, but then became pop, you know, known to the world in the 90s and eventually become very popular in the 2000s and even now uh, it is growing much faster with uh, you will see enterprise architects uh, uh, as professionals everywhere helping the organizations to keep in in certain frameworks right a uh, lot more to be done in the moving forward in the digitally transformed world um, but um, you know the, this uh, frameworks are there are much more derivative frameworks based on this uh, but it's, it's so important to understand the basics of for the actual framework itself. So essentially framework is just about asking basic questions within an organization uh, and then fitting uh, each one of them in the place where they belong like a periodic table. OK, so um, essentially, you know, it's like when you're building a airplane or building a uh, skyscraper what you do you get a blueprint drawings and the bill of material the the functional specification the drawing requirements everything put together before you go and construct it right so enterprise architecture is that getting them all together and placing them in the right place asking the right questions and right uh, collaterals collected and each collateral uh, points uh, you know, uh, connected with each other and then in tandem, they're all pointing towards the goal of the organization or the enterprise. Uh, that's how the enterprise architecture has to be designed uh, uh, with purpose, right? Um, so I'm not going to be covering too much on it. You can always go and uh, refer to enterprise architecture by uh, uh, John uh, Zachman. Um, now the overall uh, how it is uh, going to be working, right? Um, enterprise architecture. So any architecture, uh, right, has a uh, three things. One, it talks about the structure, right? It is a, a system needs a structure. So the structure is the first thing. You create a structure for a system. So enterprise is a system, right? The whole world um, is made of systems. The universe itself is a system. Then a country is a system. A continent is a system. A nation is a system. A, uh, a, uh, a government organization within uh, a nation is a system. Um, a society is a system. So if if you look into the whole thing universally, um, everything around us has a, is a system. It is functioning in some way. There is going to be some input into the system there's some output into the system whether it is desirable or undesirable um, that's how the system works correct so there is a system functioning and uh, the the uh, in order to make the system work for you for a common goal 
All you need to do is understand how the system works, right? And modify or transform the system according to your goals, right? So for that, what you need to do is understand the system itself in the first place, how it works, correct? Before even start prescribing the modification, right? So you need to understand the structure of the system or create the structure for the system if you're designing for the first time. And then the mechanism. Mechanisms is a way how things are going to be uh, talking to each other, dealing with each other. One input from one subsystem, how it goes as a um, one output, output from one subsystem, how it goes into the as an input to the next subsystem. And that's how a coordinated activity is coming together to form a process right within that subsystem. So those are all mechanisms, right? Most of the mechanisms of the system. Then the third one is the architectural parameters. So what are the uh, what we call it as a service level agreement? How what what are the things that you look in order to make the system work for you? Uh, these are all architectural parameters and um, one is scalability of the system or the process, the reliability, durability, availability of the system, adaptability, extensibility and uh, expandability, security, maintainability and much more, right? All these things has to be, you know, uh, well thought before uh, jumping into, um, you know, getting uh, the system in uh, place, okay? Now the architecture versus uh, design i'm not going to get deeper into it the most important thing people get confused between architecture and design um, so design requires a lot of engineering discipline into it basically it is based on scientific evidence and scientific methodology applied um, but the architecture is not based on a scientific uh, architecture relies on design but then architecture is uh, more about uh, you know uh, art, artistic and the goal you know oriented uh, you know uh, stuff. So it's 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 uh, it's not it is uh, um, it is not confined to any scientific methodology. It is all about um, you know um, many things uh, involved in it, non-science, uh, right? Uh, coming together to create a system which uh, basically you dream and create architecture. Then you go and validate um, that architecture to be chiseled out, uh, re-blueprinted according to the design parameters at the ground level, right? So that's the connectivity between uh, uh, architecture and engineering. Architecture is art and uh, design is science. And uh, they need both, you know, um, you can drive the sys design to create an architecture. I know a lot of people would uh, do that way. Um, it can be done that way to redesign it, re-architect, but then the primary thing is you do the architecture first and then go and find the right design parameters to, to make sure it works. So for example, if, uh, if somebody did not draw an uh, airplane, should look like this for the first time looking at the birds, somebody drew the uh, uh, airplane, right? And then the engineers went ahead and there's long years of cycles of testing out, trying to fit into that. Did, uh, the designers, the basically the, the basic science and engineering was, uh, was uh, improved to fit into it, but the airplane design remained the same. That's what the architecture, the connectivity between architecture and design should be, okay? Uh, so, and they in the um, in the, the the difference between the transformational age and um, and the old age is basically people look into um, you know um, in, the, in the industrial age you know build better faster and cheaper things that's how the industrial age was um, you know uh, driven by um, so the value proposition back then um was a uh, cost justification so instead of producing one item in the industrial age you uh, make sure that you create a uh, hundred items within the same specific uh, period of time right um so that's how you know um it was uh, done 
So, <clears throat> so the, there's a, many times they don't even do the architecture. They just do, you know, start manufacturing things and then later figure out how it fits into the cost, right? But in the information age, the value proposition is um, very different, all right? So um, the value proposition is, is um, you know, um, the assets uh, inventory, how much assets you can create, and especially in the digital, uh, digitally transformed world right now we are living, um, the balance sheets are all very different for companies. Companies keep creating uh, digital assets, uh, tradable digital assets, in which we are also promoting, right? To um, in terms of uh, creating uh, digital assets for uh, our stakeholders. So uh, the digital assets world uh, requires, you know, the value proposition is how you can continue to create the inventory. Uh, of these uh, digital assets, tradable digital assets, right? So, um, so the architecture value proposition is quite different than the industrial age. Uh, completely, you know, different for this. So it's all about alignment, transformation. You know, the quality of the transformation uh, and the architecture, transformational components in the architecture, process design, uh, adaptable process design. Um, and uh, the ecosystem adaptability, uh, the current generation organizations are uh, winning through um, um, creating ecosystem of services. A lot of hotspots within the organizations emerge out and they suddenly become unicorns, right? <clears throat> Those things, uh, in order to sustain such kind of a growth, obviously you need a lot of, um, um, you know, the value propositions uh, based on the architectural components uh, and the deep tech uh, enablement. OK, so the long term, it's all about long term now, um, sustainability and long term and the practice are, you know, very different now. Um, so overall, uh, enterprise architecture is about planning it. The from designing the whole thing based on what, how, where, who, when, and why. All these questions asked and then create a tabular structure to fit in the answers for each one of them, right? Um, when you do that, uh, there are primitive models and composite models. Uh, this, is, this needs to be uh, learned if you are really uh, serious about creating the process designs. Um, you need to understand primitive model versus um, uh, composite model. Primitive model, basically, you create model at that level, right? If you go back to our uh, inverted cone um, uh, uh, framework, somebody, you know, if you are designing a process for the information view, um, then the, pro the entire process stay there, entire model, right? When we call model, model is a subsystem that you create. Uh, you know, modeling of the subsystem on which includes multiple process, but then they are all confined within that view. That's primitive, basically within the cell. Uh, uh, not only from that, from from that view, but also within the view, there are sub uh, compartments, and we, you know, uh, like a how is like a f how is functional view, functional view process. So basically, some process are functional process. Then where is the time and what is the data? So if you are designing the data process, right, then you are creating a primitive model for the data process. Um, if you are uh, doing a composite, um, it is going across the cells and across the layers, right? So for example, if you are creating a project management process, uh, it goes through multiple uh, layers of views and within the view, multiple aspects of it, right? And so that's how the, you know, the project management process could be designed. And uh, if you are creating an inventory process, um, yes, inventory, moving of goods and storing uh, of the goods, you, it requires uh, multiple uh, uh, the uh, stakeholders involved at multiple layers, and you know your design goes through uh, you know multiple uh, you know such uh, layers. 
Um, so this is how the enterprise architecture overall from the Zachman's perspective looks, right? Um, it's a, um, if you digest it, if you would uh, understand very well, um, they are all like uh, how, um, how each one of these cells um, represent a smaller piece of the puzzle, but they are all, you know, it, it, connected with uh, each other at multiple uh, levels. Okay. So another uh, view of it, um, which is you know, second version of the same. Um, scope is that the very high level, basically the leadership level strategies. So if you design strategic uh, process, uh, you know, um, if a nation coming together to create a <clears throat> geoeconomic policy uh, for that uh, nation within a specific region and for example, agriculture, if they take agriculture and they wanted to revamp the whole, you know, thing uh, geoeconomically, create an impact within the region and uh, the, the the leadership gets together and design things from that, you know, uh, level. And uh, this is where the scope or the strategics, uh, you know, uh, are uh, working on, right? Should be working on. Their views that the, the deliverables they create the plan they make, the the documents they create, uh, and the outline they you know uh, mapping they create, uh, all are 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 a different um, level of abstractions, right? Um, that's how the strategic layer works. But then they all have to have the same set of um, questions to be asked, and the and the collaterals to be created to address those questions what how where who when and why okay why is predominantly like motivation basically why are you doing it goal so goal could be like uh, i want to transform um or improve the agri agricultural um yield by uh improve the yield by another 20 percentage uh in the next five, two years that could be the goal and then you start, you know, working on why is, why are you doing it? When is, when are going to do it, right? The time. Then who is a cust, you know, the custodians and the stakeholders, uh, how many departments are involved, how many organizations are involved, how many different peoples are going to be involved. That's the who. And where is uh, the geo geographical uh, region, the place, right? How many, uh, different places are involved, different uh, offices are going to be involved, how many physical locations are going to be working together on this, how you are going to be network all of them to um, to work in tandem. And um, how is, uh, you know, you are going to be asking questions in terms of uh, designing the process, functionality, how it is it will be done. So this is where the process design eventually at the lower labor level, the process design uh you know uh, should be created right then what is all about data so ultimately without data uh, nothing works so obviously you know what are you going to produce and uh, and uh, how the data can be stored how data is compiled and how data is uh, uh, manipulated um used and you know across multiple uh, departments that's how it is all uh, you know designed now at the business level, the same questionnaire, same, you know, the 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 um, same aspects, right? Take same aspects, but do it much elaborate way at the business level. So this is where the executive leaders get together. Okay, I got the uh, guidelines from the strategists or from the leadership. Now let me take it forward with creating um, business level derivative um, pieces of uh, collaterals from this right so you get a little deeper into it right um, the data create a um, entity mapping relationship between the data sets um, collection of data sets all these things are discussed in detail and drafted right how is the process design this is where you identify analyze identify the uh, later in this presentation you're I'm going to be showing the process de design and uh, um, you know how how the 
process is designed, right? Um, so process definitions and uh, the pointers for the process design, all these things uh, are identified at that level. And then comes the system level. System level is how you do it, right? So it, practically how you do it. This is where you design the low level, um, uh, whether you uh, software design or uh, blueprinting of the design components, or um, you get you know involved in uh, putting together the computers, putting together the net uh, network elements at the high uh, you know highest level, um, representation coming together. So database, data sets, and all of them coming together. Once again, from the data perspective, functional perspective, the place, the networked place perspective, which is where, and the who means organizational structure perspective, then when is the timeline of the whole process uh, within the subset of the system? And then the why is again aligning the goal from all the way from the strategies to leadership to the lowest level engineers, right? Um, the component technology is uh, we discussed about it. Technology is different from system design. System design is dry run stuff. You still don't go and build anything. Everything is design, design. System is design is the system. Uh, before even it, it is being implemented, uh, you need to get the whole thing dry run, flushed out. The whole design architecture blueprinting is connected with every part of the process design, sub process design. Everything is done uh, using the uh, dry run, creating the models, models and models, right? That's how system design has to be before even you go and start uh, developing something. Um, the Technologies is the the baseline, right? So for the to enable um, the system design, you uh, identify the technologies and bring the technologies to fit into it, right? To go to analyze, uh, to identify to basically find the right puzzle uh, uh, items to fit into the whole thing. And uh, component uh, development is where the programming comes, right? A lot of people make a mistake of squeezing these things into uh, whether you program a software or you 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 put together um, yeah electronic system uh, solution or you create a solution um, for um, telecommunication system, anything that you do before even getting into the component stage, you got to have um, uh, so much of um, you know techno uh, the component design is done, is driven by the technology need, not the other way around. So unfortunately, many projects fail because they they get too fast into component design and then they figure out how to fit into the overall organizational uh, planning and architecture, which is a wrong practice, okay? So um, this is how, and the operations is just uh, how it is going to fit into organizational day-to-day uh, you know, process. So you don't develop all these things for something uh, you know, for, uh, random. It's just for a specific operation within the or a bunch of operations within the organization. Okay, so that's the overall. This covers pretty much gives a baseline on what we are going to be, you know, um, uh, learning in the in the, in this uh, session. the The purpose of this session is a. Uh, uh, it can be outlined with this framework itself. Okay. Um, now the let me not uh, get deeper into it uh, because we don't have time. I'm going to be uh, leaving it uh, for uh, another session. Um, so essentially, this is how the total picture of enterprise architecture should look like. <coughs> so you develop. Um, Blueprint at the highest level, then it goes to the next level, next level, and next level. And they're all, you know, if you put them three dimensionally, you will get the idea how the overall enterprise architecture is designed, right? Um, so, um, what is a transformational uh, architecture? Um, so, basically, uh, you create a assets, what, what it is right now. 
and uh, then you identify to B where my organization is going to trans transform into in the next two years. So take your assets, business baseline processes, baseline design, and put into a transformational process, transition plan and transformational process, and then keep repeating it, uh, you know, with multiple iteration. So that's how you design something for today, which is also going to be uh, transformed uh, together with the organization uh, with purpose, with goals towards the target state. OK, so from the current state architecture to the target state, uh, taking the whole design, like how one can put a software component into um, into a life cycle of managing it. The entire enterprise uh, component should be put into the life cycle and uh, with a transformation from assets to the architecture design. Okay, um, that's the transformational uh, um, process. Uh, there are many governments have designed all over the world. This is you know uh, its own enterprise architecture planning. This is federal enterprise architecture planning for the U.S. And there is a Department of Defense Architecture, um, and all these are all done uh, already in uh, adopted in most of the places in the um, in the Western world, especially in the U.S. and Canada. But then uh, a lot of uh, countries have already um, caught. You know, they could able to be a followers. Um, countries like. Uh, um, uh, India is doing a lot of investment in the enterprise architecture planning. Uh, many other countries around the world are, you know, uh, driven by digital architecture planning, and uh, they are all looking forward. Uh, especially, you know, uh, this becomes a bigger driver for um, the um, for the industrial uh, digital industrial revolution. Everybody is looking forward. Uh, you know. Um, moving far, far beyond the industrial age, uh, getting deeper and passed across the information age into a digital information age that we are getting into. OK, so I'm not going to be spending uh, time in teaching all these things right now. Um, let me get into quickly the next part of it, which is enterprise integration. Remember, I gave you introduction. Enterprise integration becomes a glue of uh, getting into the next level of building the component to fit into the uh, into the enterprise uh, architecture. Uh, you need to understand enterprise uh, integration. OK, so. Um, integration um, is has to be differentiated from insertion or forceful, uh, you know, forceful com combining two things. So um, things are very things are different by its nature um then uh, you know um naturally the universe is not made of everything equal right things are going to be not equal they're different and uh, you you don't try to f uh, you know fix things with each other they, they don't belong same thing is applicable in the enterprise architecture world um if we talk about integration as a way of uh, aligning with each other not just inserting uh, one component to the other component that needs to be understood. Uh, organization should be viewed as a universe where you fit in the right planet at the right place. Correct. Uh, otherwise, uh, it will go out of the balance. So same way you got to be uh, viewing the um, you know integration. So for that, um, the practical um, there is a TOGAF um, created in the mid uh, 2000s. Uh, as a methodology for uh, putting the enterprise uh, planning and architecture and process design through a proper life cycle. I want uh, everybody to you know, acquire this knowledge. Anybody who is in the in aspiration for uh, having a, you know, a career in a, a process design or uh, being an enterprise architect or a professional uh, digital architect or digital designer, or digital uh, systems developer. Everybody should understand this thing because the current current world where we all, we live, um, engineering uh, is everywhere across the organizations and especially in the multi uh, or transnational or multinational, um, you know, um, uh, organizations where the components are all everywhere. Right. So you need to have uh, 
enterprise architecture driving the uh, the whole thing and that has to be put in the life cycle uh, that is um, you know very well drafted in togaf unfortunately togaf is not understood many people most of the people unfortunately properly it's a three dimensional view you know it is very difficult to put it in, in you know in the two dimensional picture but it is a very highly three dimensional each one of the life cycles for example everything is driven by architecture right but then before the enterprise architecture it goes to the the next thing is to defining the scope of the organization at certain point of time within the organization it has to go to the next level of business architecture so the business architecture again has to be three dimensional which is uh, basically c is embedded within or uh, underneath of a uh, underneath of b so um like a three dimensionally you have to view a the b is will layer below a there are multiple b's below one a and same way multiple c's below one b and C and B go through a lot of iteration like a gear and wheel. OK, it has to be viewed that way. Got to visualize this diagram in that way. Gear and wheel between B and C, gear and wheel between uh, B and A. And there would be iteration between A, B and C multiple times before even another cycle of D comes in. Right. So what is the information systems architecture design and development of information systems? And the technology is the hardware or the, you know, the physical design systems uh, that comes under the technology architecture needs to be um, you know, very well uh, thought and uh, combined as a gear and wheel system together. Okay? Um, then finding the opportunity to fit into the you know, customer solutions and all the, the, and then putting everything into the governance. Uh, is the next phase of uh, TOGAF. So there's a um, separate um, um, session. Um, I will be happy to um, provide on uh, TOGAF, and uh, you know, uh, which can be um, we can visit uh, much more, have a deep dive uh, with that. So it's a, it's an open system. You can go and search TOGAF, and uh, the whole thing you can you know learn by yourself. Um, now coming to process design, right? So how the process So the business architecture model, you know, uh, combines the process view, the facade view, um, domains view, communication view, and the entity view. All of them uh, coming together um, is the business architecture model. Um, so obviously, um, you know, you need to have all the pieces uh, combined together to, uh, you know, make it work, right? Then the um, so what is the so facade? Facade describes you know how you want to present yourself to the viewers. Um, basically, the the whole perspective of the organization, uh, the enterprise, with respect to the outside actors, um, you know, and uh, how you deal with the external world. That needs to be presented uh, clearly. That's the facade view, and uh, then the process view is um, uh, dis, uh, the, the communication view is all about uh, inter-process communication between the systems and then the within the components. And then the process view is uh, all about the coordinated activities towards common goal, right? Um, the business entity view is all about the thing modeling. Basically, you data with respect to the state, time, and the um, space, right? All these things put together is the business entity view. So what is Fazard? Um, essentially, um, does your business know all the um, Fazards it, it needs in order to interact with all the parties involved? Uh, and uh, those Fazards are documented properly. Does your business have a list of all interactions it offers, right? Uh, does the business have a documentation for uh, all these interactions basically the rule of engagement, the playbook, and 
the um, um, the evidence uh, uh, by which uh, you know you are going to be uh, dealing with the uh, documenting the evidences of those interactions with the external world um, forms that you need to uh, collect um, information that you need to put out to the outside world example updating the website or uh, posting in the social media all these things are bazaars dealing with the external world um, with the with the actors so the actors and the use case the personas has to be identified and how um, each persona would be uh, defined with the you know in relation to each other has to be clearly uh, drafted in the bazaar view um, so the the next thing is the business and its ties to the interaction you know back to its goal whether you you can keep on designing the facade and keep interacting with the external world but is it really aligned with the goals of the organization that's ne that needs to be addressed right so um the uml modeling provides you with the business use case actor design very well um that's the you know very basic uh, uml diagram it's easy to you know create uml diagrams right um uh, every i'm not going to you know give a lecture on how each one of these uh, notations work you can find out by yourself so a basic uml uh, use case diagram would be the best way to design a facade right um then um example is this customer order is the use case customer is the persona the actor and the process order is the use case right the communication view. So um, communication view is all about the internal communications to the business and outside the business. So how you communicate within the components, within the components of the uh, system and how you are going to be dealing with the external actors, right? So um, it's a bi-directional and unidirectional as well. So communication view has to be separated from the business process view because this primarily drives everything from the point of view of communication between the components of the system. What is the best uh, way to design a communication view? Once again, the UML modeling, uh, the same similar uh, uh, you know, notations uh, using a different uh, uh, notational components, but uh, like business entity is, is uh, you know, um, depicted with a, with, a, with a rectangular boss both of the business actor with a slash in the head, right? That's a business, regular actor and business actor. Okay, this is, that's a communication model and includes the, the relationship and the communication interaction with them with, a, with the arrow mark. Um, so this, has, this is an example of how the uh, business communication diagram works. Customer with respect to order entry, um, processing the order and delivering the order, right? So this is the communication diagram compared to the other one which is a which is a user um, relationship between the persona and the use case that's you know two different same thing two different view okay this is the communication view and what is process view this is where the business process design and modeling works right so the processes are coordinated activities executed in a business environment to achieve one or more uh, business goals so coordinated activities. So there are activities and bunch of activities, hundreds of such activities collected together and make them coordinate with each other. This is where the fun traditional functional modeling to the process modeling transformation, um, you know, is a, is a key here. Um, if you do functional modeling, um, you collect all these activities are indiv individual activities done by some human resource right not uh, necessarily coordinating with each other but when you are driving a process oriented organization which is the foundation for the um, digitally uh, digital transformation um, such uh, uh, you know entities and such a design uh, if you want to to have a, a transformational architecture which fits into the um, you know um, ecosystem uh, organizations or uh, you know um, especially the unicorn organizations with 
which goes to multiple geographical locations with uh, reaching out with uh, varieties of products to varieties of demography of you know, the um, customers, you require a fantastic uh, and resilient and transformational process. And uh, without proper process modeling, um, you can sustain it, right? A um, lot of uh, evidence are there, companies uh, bust because of uh, this reason, right? Um, then the connectivity between the facades, process view, you know, diff facades and the process needs to be connected and that has to be addressed. Um, yeah, you can just simply create a Visio diagram or a Word document with a simplified notification, but um, you can also create complex uh, one. You will be ending up eventually to create a complex process designs using um, you know many tools, but the again uh, UML, uh, BPML uh, comes handy to do it, right? So now we are introducing what is called you know business process modeling language. Um, so UML is a very simplified one, but uh, BPML is much a little bit uh, sophisticated. Uh, there are uh, notations, uh, standards and notations available, which you can use it for a uh, BPM. And BPM and the eventually can be um, uh, nowadays a lot of tools available to make uh, um, yeah, an implementable uh, robotic uh, business process. This is where you see a lot of automation happening everywhere because the current generation uh, uh, BPML tools uh, provide the ability to transform the designed process models into an implement implementable uh, process model beautifully. Uh, I know the uh, there are a lot of failures because the people who are implementing such systems uh, does not go through the proper discipline of uh, design and architecture. That's why you know they all fail uh, to implement or uh, you know create the such kind of an automation, especially driven by artificial intelligence. Is uh, another component getting involved in it, and uh, without the proper engineering and architecture blueprint design, these systems are created which go bubble bust, right? Uh, but uh, if you follow this discipline, um, you will be doing a fantastic job in creating and be part of such, uh, you know, uh, transformational uh, uh, system designs. OK. So sample um, is this um, same thing you put into a fish lane, um, you know. Uh, swim, sorry, swim lane diag uh, diagram where you got the order entry communicating with the um, you know the process order entry process or management system the warehousing process three different process but then they are all interacting with each other um, you know through the communication so um, what BB, BBM and brings a lot more um, magic compared to the traditional YOML because it, it gives you the aspect of the time parallel behavior and all. Okay. So um, basic things of BPM and as I told you, you can you know you can learn it by yourself. It's very simple notations you can use to create these parallel activities or uh, decision, you know, making you know uh, uh, checkpoints and all. Okay. So um, Everything put together, there is a you know you when you look at to the whole thing, it just the um, everything combined together provides you a good business architecture. Okay. Um, now I'm not going to get into the business uh, process management um, um, in this uh, session, but I'm going to give you uh, a sneak peek through of what you, it will be. Um, basically, business processes are designed at every level. So if you see the inverted cone that we saw in the enterprise architecture, there is a high level strategy architecture, strategy business process. So business process can be at the strategy level as well, leadership level. And there is an organizational business process designed at the business level or the next level to the strategy. And then there are operational business processes which can be implemented technically at the operational level, okay? So 
um, when when somebody talks about automation and business process, everybody is talking about the operational one, but that's not the way it should be done. The design has to come all the way from the strategy, and they all have to have a alignment with the uh, with each other, and uh, that's what we are going to be um, you know seeing when we do the deep dive into the process design. Okay, so overall. System design, right? I'm going to put everything into perspective. When you sit and design a system, make it very simple. A system could be yeah, simple, simple goal-oriented uh, project that you wanted to implement. So, for example, if you are designing something to deliver. Uh, move a proper uh, move a good from point A to point B. That becomes a supply chain system. If you are designing, a, a, if you wanted to uh, store something for a, some period of time, it becomes an inventory system. And if you want to communicate with the customer in terms of taking the order, it becomes an order system. And let's go from the business to the next level. Um, if you are between the you know, within the country, if you are designing uh, something to reduce the poverty of your country, then you are designing a system to reduce the poverty, which includes multiple subsystem, agriculture system, um, the uh, the uh, productivity system, uh, training, retraining system, all of the systems coming together is one system. So country itself is a system. Nation is a system, state is a system, or a geographical, geo, uh, geoeconomic region is a system. So, when you system, when you are designing a system, a common um, discipline is a system consists of input, output, controls, and mechanism. Okay, very simple. That's it. If you know, if you start from here, everything becomes very, very easy. Input, output, controls, and mechanism with the garbage, which is unwanted output, right? Now, I, I'm, what I am doing is we learned the business architecture. OK, so I'm taking the business architecture and putting into this control system. See how it fits in, right? For Zard's view, in the input side, communication view in the input side, Output side, Fazard views, communication view plays a major role. Inside of the system, right? Inside the components, right? Within the system, this, there is a communication view, entity view, process view. And the mechanisms, you know, in, involved. Process view is the basically the mechanism is the uh, is designed using the process view. And then there are controls which can change the coordinates of the process, how the process, you know, if you want to uh, control the behavior of the process by changing certain data, um, that's the control. So input, output, mechanism, controls, embedded within the business architecture. Once you get this thing, you are um, done. Um, I, you know, basically, you know, I explain it in a very simple, layman's language if you are making make pizza as a pizza oven as a system right there is an input control mechanism output and garbage right so what do you um, do it right so basically what are the controls in the um, in the input input is a dough um, the pizza dough and then the all the other ingredients that you require for the pizza and a mechanism is how you put that uh, pizza uh, into the oven and how you start. Um, these are all mechanisms. And control is temperature, right? By changing the temperature and the time, these two are controls. And the output is um, delicious pizza. And if you, if you overcook with the wrong process and wrong mechanism and wrong input, what you get is garbage pizza, right? So every system has to be approached this way and uh, then reinforce your uh, uh, business architecture modeling into it. Um, you know, this can be done uh, fantastically. Okay. 
Um, so I'm going to stop here. I'm not going to get into the um, unified modeling language and all, which you can, um, anybody can learn, um, you know, uh, do the self-learning of it. Um, so it's uh, quite, um, the purpose of the session is to just to open up, um, you know, the, for you to go and start doing um, the right practices, right things, um, in terms of um, approaching everything from the architectural perspective, do the right thing the right way, and uh, be very successful in the um, transformational uh, process design and uh, process management engagements, including uh, uh, digital acceleration. Uh, there are many, many, many opportunities around in terms of engaging with the uh, with the world. Um, many new generation of um, um, opportunities are uh, are are coming out because of the global changes. Um, so obviously, uh, you know, one will be very successful uh, approaching uh, with the right framework of uh, you know um, of tools, technologies, and uh, the blueprints. Right, that's the purpose of this uh, session. I hope. Uh, it's um it's an eye opener okay um probably we will have a different sessions for deep dive into bpm or um, when, you know uh, whenever possible okay thank you yeah, thank you sir for your presentation